In this video, I want to show you how to go on a road trip in your Tesla and take advantage of RV campgrounds to charge up overnight while you're sleeping and while Tesla's camp mode keeps the car nice and warm while it's freezing outside. I'm also going to go into detail about the battery charge curve and give you tips on how you can maximize your time at a supercharger. But first, let's talk about packing the car. I want to have a nice ample emergency supply of water that I won't be able to easily get to. So I'm gonna put that at the bottom in case it leaks. Then I'm just gonna fill in the rest of the space. I've got my little emergency kit. Once I cover this up, and once I have a mattress on top, it's gonna to be pretty much inaccessible. So what I've discovered is that a twin size mattress fits very nicely in the back of a Model 3. It's as easy as... <laughs> and there it is, easy peasy. A twin size mattress inside the Model 3. I wanted to mention that the Model Y has much more room in the back and is the better option for Tesla camping. You can even attach a tent to the back of the Model Y. Putting in your destinations before you leave home may prove useful should you end up in an area that has no cellular data coverage. The Tesla will still navigate without data, but it can't look up the address of a destination based on only the name of the destination. All right, so in the front of my Tesla, I've got the Tasmanian cooler. It does fit nicely. It even leaves enough room for charge cables to go on the side. And those are things that I want to get to quickly, as opposed to under here. It also fits under here, but as you can see, that's not so accessible. Let's talk really quickly about charge cables. This is the standard plug. This is the 1540, I believe. That gives you 220 at 50 amps. And this is a special connector that I purchased myself that gives me the TT30, which is the Travel Trailer 30 amp, 120 volt. This isn't actually gonna give you very much charge. This is the one you really wanna be using. Most campgrounds will have the 50 amp 220. If it doesn't, well, I have something to fall back to. So those are the cables that I would recommend if you plan on using RV campgrounds. I have a lawn chair. I have a windshield reflector to keep the heat out when I'm parked. And then I have plenty of space back here. Here are some of my groceries. There's a cup with some utensils. I got some bed linens. Notice that I have everything in these grocery bags. I put everything I can in these because this makes it easy to move everything out of the way when you come at night to sleep. Good morning, everyone. Time to go. Let's not forget our charge cable adapter. It is 7.02 a.m. I'm two minutes behind schedule. Let's head to Ruby's Inn RV and Campground. It says we're going to have to charge in Yermo for 15 minutes and then Prim, Nevada. We're going to arrive in nine hours and 10 minutes at 4.12 p.m. Okay, we have an update. Um, we have now switched to Baker instead of Yermo. We are going to arrive in Baker with 12%, which is really good. Because of the way EV batteries work, the more charge they have, the slower they can accept more charge. The amount of energy in the battery is called its state of charge, or SOC. Tesla's V3 superchargers can deliver up to 250 kilowatts to your car, but your car can only accept that much energy for only a handful of minutes. Then the kilowatts from the supercharger will slowly decline over time as your battery fills up more and more. This is called the charge curve. As you can see, it only takes 10 minutes to reach 50% SOC, 20 minutes to reach 65%, and 30 minutes to reach 80%. And that's assuming you plugged in with 0% SOC to begin with, which you most likely haven't. Once you reach that 80% SOC, there's no good reason to waste another 30 minutes waiting for the last 20%, unless of course you absolutely need to. This means your typical supercharging session should be around 25 minutes. Okay, we're coming into Baker. Oh, yeah, I probably should have picked the next driveway. There's the uh, DC fast charging that they have been building for a long time. And of course, the Tesla 40 superchargers. All right, here we are. So it's saying 20 minutes to continue your trip, and I'm adding miles at approximately 600 miles an hour. Let's, uh, let's go get some food. Baker does not have the food options that Yermo does, but you know what? It's food. All right, I think it's time to head back to the road again. 
looks like we need to spend uh, 20 minutes in Vegas and 35 minutes in St. George. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the world's biggest thermometer. We're coming up on the supercharger in Las Vegas. Okay, there it is. How do I get in? Oh, here we go. We are plugged into the supercharger, pulling 160 kilowatts. That's not bad. This V3 supercharger is capable of 250 kilowatts, but I'm only getting 160 because I arrived with a 38% state of charge. And because of the charge curve, I won't be seeing the full 250 kilowatts. And then it looks like I need to spend 40 minutes at St. George. Why don't I spend a little more time in Vegas and less time at St. George? Spending 10 more minutes in Las Vegas actually only saved me 5 minutes at my next supercharger in St. George, which also has to do with that charge curve. However, I did need to use a restroom, and it's Las Vegas, so I didn't feel too bad about walking two-thirds of a mile to find one. That took much longer than I expected. Uh, you have to walk miles to uh, get to a restroom, or anything really. I mean, everything is everywhere and nothing is anywhere. It's hard to explain. So at our current charge state, 35 minutes at St. George, we will arrive at 11%. All right, that's not bad, that's not bad. Okay, we are leaving Las Vegas. This is kind of a cool section of road. We're kind of cutting through the mountain here. Welcome to Utah. All right, we are approaching the St. George Supercharger. <laughs> that's, that's the Superchargers? At the time I recorded this video, there were only four urban superchargers at this location. In May of 2023, Tesla installed 12 V3 superchargers at this same location. 70 kilowatts. Interesting. Okay, I took advantage of the Cracker Barrel restroom, made myself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and I'm now ready to hit the road. I could go directly to Ruby's Inn with 6% remaining. I think that's a good, comfortable margin. All right, back on to the 15 North. Interesting, the speed limit here is 80. I've never seen a speed limit of 80 before. This guy must be doing 100 miles an hour. So this is the turnoff if you want to see the north end of Zion. The north end of Zion is very separate than the south end of Zion. Right, this is called the Dixie Forest. Wow, how cool is that? Wow. Oh my goodness, there's another one. It is 4.06 and I've got 18 miles of range left. We are good to go. Okay, I've completed check-in and I've got spot 97. Let's go find it. So I guess we're gonna go around this building and then pull in. Oh, that's a nice one. So oh, that's a good one to remember, 93. What do we got here? Just a place to park. Where is the hookup? I think if I back in here, I might get stuck in the mud. If I come forward here, yeah, this is firm enough. I'm not gonna get stuck in this. Okay, tents allowed with site 97 only. So because I'm site 97, I can actually pitch a tent. This must be my table and that must be my fire pit. Interesting, okay. Then whose tables are those? And whose fire pit is that? And there's my electrical hookup. And that's where I'm gonna be parked for the night. How cool is that? Here's the campground. Okay, we're gonna do a little experiment here. We're gonna see what the different charge rates are with the different adapters. Let's start with the lowest. Okay, so this is your standard, typical RV hookup. All right, we plugged in to the 120 volt outlet. Huh, well, let's go check the power supply. Let's see, is this getting power? Doesn't seem like it, so let's try this again. Push the test. Nope, huh, I'm gonna give up on that. I decided to test the NEMA 515 plug when I got home. You can expect to gain only four miles per hour from the 12 amps at 120 volts. And at that rate, it would take days to charge your car. We're gonna go with the TT30 now. Let's see what that gives us. Okay, so this time it lit up. So that's promising. 
And now it says charging. Huh, look at that. 24 amps, 114 volts, getting about seven, eight miles an hour. Let's go try the 50 amp and see what happens. So this is what the 50 amp plug. As you can see, the difference here is I've got 32 amps at 208 volts. So that is going to make a significant difference. It's not a supercharger, but you know what? If you've got overnight, that should be perfect. There are a few things you need to know about charging on an RV campground. For one, since you're only pulling about seven kilowatts to begin with, the charge curve becomes irrelevant. Second, if you are using 50 amps, you may want to limit the amperage manually to avoid popping a circuit breaker or starting a fire should the campground not have proper wiring. Remember, you're pulling 40 amps at 220 for over eight hours straight, which will put a strain on any weak points in the electrical circuit. You don't want to be dealing with a trip circuit breaker at three in the morning, much less an electrical fire. All right, this is Sunset Point. Okay, so I did my sunset pictures. We are plugged back in, and it looks like it's going to take nine hours and five minutes. Probably get up around six, go take a sunrise picture. So that should be fine. So we are now getting 18 miles an hour with the heater on. So it does go down when you're using the heater. So this is gonna take 10 hours and 30 minutes, but that's all the way to the top. I don't need to fill it all the way to the top for tomorrow. This is the bathroom at Ruby's campground. Pretty basic, nothing inspirational. So this is the uh, Tesla destination charger at the Best Western, which is right next to the campground. So in the middle of all the hotel rooms is a small RV park. And uh, the Tesla destination charges are over there. Or if you reserve a spot, you can actually plug in here, but it's, it's only TT30, which is very slow compared to the free destination chargers. So I don't know if that makes any sense. Western bacon with onion rings and a Mountain Dew. Great Western fast food. I would not consider it great or fast. This is the trail to Queen's Garden. I think this was worth it. There's a, it's kind of nice being down among the hoodoos. It's a lot better than just looking down on the hoodoos. So I would recommend this. Okay, so we ended day two with 140 miles left. I am now plugged into the RV charger. And we are adding the yeah, same as yesterday, 20 miles an hour with the heater on. Okay, so if I turn off the heater, I get another five miles an hour, but that's okay. If you don't need, if you've got eight to 10 hours to charge, you should be able to fill up an entire battery. Shouldn't be a problem. Now let's check to see what we actually need for tomorrow. So tomorrow we are going to, the Zion Canyon Campground and RV Resort. So let's see. We could actually make it now with 141 miles. That's actually enough to get us the 145 miles that we need to go. We would pull in with 5%. So that's interesting. I don't need to even charge tonight. So I could actually go without charging. Now that would be foolish because spending a night without charging is, well, that's wasted time. So that tells me that I don't need to fill it up all the way. So let's go ahead and change the limit. I'm gonna to go to the top of the daily, right in between daily and trip. And now that my neighbor's gone, it kind of just wide open here. It's really nice. The only drawback is the proximity to the highway. Now, when you're in the car, that doesn't didn't really bother me. But I think when you're outside, that would bother you. All right, I'm gonna go to the shower. I've got my stuff. The shower is right there in that building right there. Whew, man, that was amazing. I felt so good to take a hot shower. Hot shower is really nice. You do want to bring your own towel and soap. Oh, and the bathroom over there is much better than the one over there. Okay, the sun's going down. I'm getting ready, getting my bed ready. Always a good idea to do that with daylight. 
I learned a few things from last night. One, take one of your floor mats, put it outside the door, so when you take off your shoes, you have something to stand on. You don't want to put your socks in the dirt and then crawl in your bed, and then leave a space here to put your shoes. I put all my food and valuables here. Anything liquid that doesn't want to turn into a block of ice, I'm gonna put it in my car. One thing I learned from last night, cold emanates from the windows. It is like, like a space heater, but the opposite of a space heater. And the heat, while the heat was on, the heat heats up the front of the car, but it does not do a very good job of heating your toes. So I might next time come up with something here to keep my toes warm. You know what, I have a sleeping bag. Maybe I'll do that. I might just do that. But tomorrow morning, I want to get up early and I want to get to the sunrise, take the sunrise pictures, and then I'll come back and it'll probably be around nine or 10. And then I have to check out at 11 when that times out really well. Okay, good morning, people. We're gonna be setting our destination to Inspiration Point. I'm getting ready to do my sunrise picture using my special camera rig here. The main reason for my trip is to capture what are called gigapans, which are extremely high resolution images that are made up of hundreds of photographs all stitched together into one panoramic photo. It is 10.08, heading back to the campsite. I'm gonna pack up my car and check out. I'm all packed up, ready to go. Goodbye campground. Let's see what the stats are now. We're gonna have 26% when we arrive, and we are currently 196 miles. So one of the reasons I pulled over is I realized that this is not the route I wanna be taking. I actually wanna go this way. I guess I need to tell it to go to Orderville. Orderville. You don't wanna go outside the park again. You wanna go through the scenic drive. So I guess I need to tell it to go to Orderville and then once I get somewhere down here, maybe I'll recalculate and tell it to go to Zion. Let's get going. You actually want to take nine. So when you see this dilapidated RV park, it looks pretty depressing. You're looking for the Mount Carmel Junction, which is actually nine, Highway 9. The scenic route to Zion National Park. Now you see the car wants me to continue going straight. But what you really want to do is you want to turn here, where it says Zion National Park. And that makes sense, doesn't it? This is the scenic highway that I've been trying to get to, and that Tesla is adamantly against me getting using. All right. Hey, just rerouted. You know, I just got thinking, maybe because I had avoid tolls enabled, maybe that's why it, just, it tried to get me around going this way. Wow, look at that, they're measuring the RV. And we've come to a standstill. From what I remember, the tunnel I think is around here. It goes from here to here, and we are now here. So that looks like a pretty long line waiting to get into the park. It's 12.51, let's see what time it is when we get to the tunnel. Now it clearly identifies a person standing next to my car. Okay, it's 128. We're about to go into the tunnel. That is the Canyon Overlook Trail to the right. And this is the Canyon Overlook Trail parking lot, which has some parking spots available. But that's probably because you can only get to it from Zion. You can't turn left. All right, here we go. 128, we made it to the tunnel. That's a beautiful thing to pop out to. So I made it to the visitor center. They do have two electrical vehicle parking spots. So this is the other entrance. Okay, so I guess that means we're leaving Zion. I guess we're now in the city of Springdale. Wow, look at all these cars. Cars everywhere. Zion Canyon Campground and RV Park. 
Okay, I've got A16. Apparently I just have to drive around the corner. All right, here it is. Beautiful view of big rocks around here. It's a pretty good location. All right, there it is, A16. That is a small spot. We have 142 miles. I have plenty of juice. I don't even need to charge. Yay, 50 amp, nice. Okay, so I plugged in while I was here. What are we getting? We're getting 26 miles an hour. Let's see how much power air conditioning takes. It's about the same as the heater. If not a little bit more. 20 miles an hour. So that's about the same we saw with the heater. So whether it's the heater or the air conditioning, it takes about the same amount of energy. All right, now it says no tents on RV sites. So the question is, where am I gonna put all my stuff when I'm in the back? Okay, so I have a much better understanding of how things work. Basically, if you're not on that shuttle, you're not gonna see anything. There are only two things you could do without being on that shuttle. And today I don't have a shuttle pass. So I could do this trail or I could do the Watchman Trail. Now I know the Watchman Trail has some good photography opportunities. Okay, I'm back at the campsite, plugged in. Let's go ahead and take the limit all the way to the top. Okay, I managed to do it. I got everything in the car. Got my suitcase on the driver's seat. Still had plenty of room. And then in the back, the sleeping bag at the bottom, my pillows, and the only thing I have back here is a tripod shoved over in the corner. I have the whole back of the car for sleeping. Okay, so it's 8.20 a.m. and there's still plenty of parking. Lots of spaces here. Lots of spaces here. Okay, 2 p.m. We have 231 miles. Let's go home. Let's see, where does it have me supercharging? It has me charging in Vegas. Hmm. Okay, in the interest of skipping Vegas entirely, I've actually set my destination to Prim, Nevada, which is outside Vegas. I have enough to get there. I'll have 6% when I arrive. In 500 feet, turn left onto West Prim Boulevard. Starting to charge, we had 22 miles when we got here. 24 kilowatts, really? Okay, that's a lot better. Well, not that much better. 55 kilowatts, really? One thing you need to know about the older V2 superchargers is that not only are you limited to 150 kilowatts, but you also need to share that 150 kilowatts with another stall. If both cars are requesting 150 kilowatts from the supercharger, then the charger will only deliver half of that to each car or 75 kilowatts to each stall. However, it is rare this happens due to the battery charge curve. If the car you are sharing a transformer with is already at a 70% state of charge, then they will not need more than the 75 kilowatts and the excess kilowatts will go to you. And of course, if there is no car sharing with you, you get all 150 kilowatts. You can identify the pairs of superchargers that share power cabinets as they share the same number but have a different letter. So 1A is sharing the power cabinet with 1B. Be sure to look at the stalls to see which ones are paired as each supercharger location will be laid out differently. So there's one, two, three, four. So that means the first four stalls are sharing a transformer with the second four stalls. And then there's 5A and 5B. So if I could get to 5B, let's see what happens. Well, now, isn't that interesting? Now I'm getting 141 kilowatts. So the trick here is you don't want to be sharing with another car. Look at that, 142. That's very close to 150, which is the max. This is not an issue with the V3 superchargers 
as they are sharing four superchargers with a power cabinet that can deliver 1,000 kilowatts. And one-fourth of 1,000 kilowatts is 250 kilowatts, which is the maximum you can pull anyways. Okay, it's 507 at 203 miles. Let's see, let's see what it takes to get home. Okay, so we'll need to stop at Yermo or Baker. We'll probably stop at Baker. Okay, so Baker is too close. Baker's coming up, actually. I have too much energy for Baker. So I'm going to go to Barstow, which I don't think I've ever been to. So it's in the back of Chili's? It's got to be behind Chili's. Okay, here we are. All right, so we don't need to fill up all the way. Let's go ahead and figure out how long we actually need to be here. So we don't, we, I want to get home with, let's say 10% remaining. It's 112 miles to get home and 10% is around 24 miles. So I want to be able to have 136 miles of range before I leave Barstow. Down to 90 kilowatts, around 140 miles. I'm going to go ahead and unplug at this point. Okay, that should give us what we need to get home with 10%. It's telling me 12%. So this is our last supercharge. Thank you, Barstow. Okay, we have arrived. We made it home. We have 20 miles left on the battery. That's perfect. And this concludes our journey, 8.35 p.m. In the end, I only paid $207 for transportation and lodging which is not bad for three nights and four days. Charging up at RV campgrounds while sleeping is a great way to save time and money. If you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and be sure to check out my other videos, like the ones you see here.